I thought he was our founder. <coughs> you know, I, I just thought that, no, it's pretty important what he said. Where I went to Bible college, what Paul said was important. I'm not saying that Paul said wasn't important, but it was more important than what Christ said. Paul's good teaching, of, you know, how to get rid of a deacon and you know, all that stuff. <coughs> and then how to organize the church and all that. But you can't throw out that thing that Timothy put down. We need to look at that. So your counseling should be based on what? Christ teaching. And if I do it, will it make me a godly person? Right? I mean, that's the word. Okay, now let's quickly go to uh, Oh, I already did that. I did the first. It's First Timothy six three, I believe. I'm going to go to Matthew six. Uh, this is worry. Uh, Matthew six. I'm going to start in verse twenty four. Uh, it's about serving your master. No man can serve two masters. For you will hate the one. Or else will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and them. Therefore I say unto you, take no anxious thought for your life. For what you shall eat, what you shall drink, or, or for your body, what you shall put on, is not life more than meat and the body more than drink. I'm so thankful that the first church I passed them, I got five dollars less in unemployment. And I had four children. No, the fourth one was born up there, my son, Richard. And uh, and we qualified for welfare. Way up in the mountains. And we had to trust God for food. Did I like it? Are you kidding? Out of Bible college? I have a degree and I have to pray for food on the table? Give me a break. <laughs> you know what I mean? I needed it. I needed five years of trusting God to meet our needs. And I have to tell you, beloved, feel good. Problem today, most of the time we don't have needs. We have a lot of wants, you know, but not needs. Okay, but he's saying, trust him. Look at the falls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, neither, nor do they gather to barns. Your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you much, not much more than they? Which of you, by taking anxious thought, can add one cubit to his stature? <clears throat> Why do you take anxious thought for clothes? Yeah, I was worried about what shirt I should wear today. You know, would this be too flashy for these conservative people here? But uh, I didn't even think about it. Where's the shirt that's clean? <laughs> um, consider the lilies of the field and how they grow and they fail not neither they spin. And yet I say unto you, even Solomon, all his glory, was arrayed like one of these. Therefore, if God to clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into heaven, still he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith. I like the, I, I mark faith and bread. Remember, I use colors to mark my Bible. And uh, often he said, little faith. He didn't say no faith. Sometimes he, a few times he says no faith, but little faith. Remember the disciples were in the boat, and it's sinking, and their feet are wet, and Jesus is sleeping. How dare you? And he says, oh, ye of little faith. Lord, look. Look at our circumstances. But who was in the boat? Yeah, sometimes we forget who's in the boat. You know what I'm saying? Little faith. And he said, okay, little faith, what does that mean? Not enough faith, not to worry. That's in the context there, little faith. Not enough faith not to worry in that situation. situation. That's why. Therefore, taking no anxious thoughts, saying, what shall we eat? Yeah, what are we having for lunch, Jim? I hope it's not soup. Uh, or uh, what you shall drink. Uh, I hope you have Coke Zero, Jim. Uh, you know, those things. But what does the wife do? I, I feel sorry for wives. You're having someone over for dinner you've never had over from before. <coughs> You know, if you're wealthy, let's take them out. <laughs> I don't know what they like, you know, uh, eat or whatever. And he says, or wherewithal shall you be clothed? 
For all these things do the Gentiles seek. What's he saying here? Something very important. Worry is what people do that don't know God. People got, you're going to tell someone with worry, they have to realize, wait a minute, this is not. That's what people do that don't know God. What else can they do? Gentiles. Who were the Gentiles? The unbelievers. Okay. For your heavenly Father knows if you have need of these things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take, therefore, no anxious thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take thought for itself, for the things of it. Sufficient unto the day is what? Is the evil the right? What's he telling me? Learn to live a day at a time. Because what is worry? I worry when I lose control. See, I want to control the future. I want to control this. I want to control that. And he's saying, hey, you got enough issues today. Don't worry about tomorrow. James, is your wife here? No. Okay, I thought maybe she was here. Uh, anyway, he married a really a neat girl. She went to school with my granddaughter. They went to a good school. I wish it was Calvary, but it wasn't. It wasn't Biola, where I graduated or Calvary Seminary. It wasn't a school that I was president of. No, the name of it. They went to Grace. And Tom teaches at Grace. My son in law teaches at Grace at night. So we're kind of Grace people. A little Grace goes a long ways. Wow. Right? Amen. Okay, now. So, what do I do about worry? I, I wanted you to see that how, what Jesus said about worry. And he says, when I worry, when I am worried, I am saying, I really don't know who Jesus is. I'm struggling, right, with faith. Now, I have faith for salvation, not faith for everyday living. Isn't it amazing? I have faith for heaven. <laughs> And I believe that God's going to take me there. But I can't trust him to take me through today. Well, thinking about getting through, is anybody here driving up to Sioux City so I can drive with you instead of Paul? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to uh, I mean, just some simple things on, on faith. Let's go to 2 Timothy. Second Timothy two twenty four. The servant of the Lord must not strive to be gentle all after teach, in meekness obstructing those that oppose themselves if God free eventually will give them repentance to acknowledge the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him to do his will. That's heavy duty stuff. Work it. Satan is setting snares. But growing up in Los Angeles, I had no idea what that was. But when I went up with those hill buildings and up the mountain and loggers, one guy was a trapper. <coughs> he said, Logan, you want to go out on my trap line? I go, oh yeah, uh -huh. you know, like snipe hunt or whatever, you know, that for real. And I said, you know, that went out with Daniel Boone. He said, no. He says, no, I, I, I sell pulse and make money. You know, so we went out to his crap line, and we're walking, and then up there, it's logging, you know, there's what, woods. So we're walking through the woods, and I'm walking with him, and the path was narrow, I was in front. And I almost stepped in the snare, or the trap. Have you ever seen those traps? It's not a good idea. You know, it could really hurt your ankle. And, uh, <clears throat> Why went I almost stepping? 
an anointing didn't recognize it was totally concealed. It looked just like the rest of the woods where we were walking. But I did see something that let me know uh, a, a, a trap was there. The dead rabbit hanging in the tree. I didn't think it committed suicide <laughs> in the woods, but it didn't quite. You know, one of these things does not belong. Like the other. This dead rabbit hanging just high enough so the animal would pounce. What's that tell me about this verse? I'm not going to see the animal. I'm just going to see a disguised crap. And if I take the bait, whose will am I doing? The will of the enemy. That's important. See, people need to know that it's not just I'm doing bad or oh, I, I, you know, I just made a mistake or whatever. Uh, and then the the last thing I'd like to share with you. Stop what? Stop walking. Let me just stop. Oh, he yelled at me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was glad. Yeah. And, and you know, I learned a lot of things. He traps minks. But this was a bigger animal. You choose the trap for what you're trapping. The size of the trap and where you put it. You put mink traps down by a, a screen. <coughs> and I learned a lot up there. Didn't help me much in ministry, but I learned a lot about, you know, people, are, the cowboys and all that and about that stuff. Yes. So you stopped walking, you avoided the trap because you heard the voice of the guide. Yeah. He told me stop, that's what I did, because he hadn't said much. There's you know, good, when you're walking through the woods. There's a good like, metaphor there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But the idea is that I constantly need to realize they're not going to see a trap. They're only going to see what? And what is the bait? You know people that fish? I don't fish. I don't have the patience for fishing. I have patience for counseling, but not fishing. You know, drowning worms is not my... <laughs> I think a good use of mine. But uh, I know enough about fishing that you use a certain type of fishing for the type of fish you want to get. We lived... The last church I pastored when I had to go speak at the uh, you know, with almost who's who in the zoo in the crowd. Uh, we have the largest fish ladder for the salmon to go up the fish ladder. And you could go, when the salmons were running, a lot choose to go on the rocks and then, you know, smash and all of that. The others went up the fish ladder. So if you're going to catch a salmon, you know, you're going to fish differently than a trout and all of that. Use different bait, different methods, and so on. Well, realize that Satan is going to use different methods and different baits for different people. Yesterday, I, I really had a lot of fun. Uh, I was at Walmart, and I know most everybody there, and I had fun with them. And this, you know, if you don't take all your groceries, the, they get in trouble. The Walmart employees get in trouble three times that they're fired if they leave your groceries on that deal. And so this lady, I, she put one thing down, I didn't see it, so she grabbed it, she gave it to me, she all the lady, and I said, oh, I'm so sorry you did that. She said, why? I said, I know if I walked out, you'd have to chase me, right? Yes. I said, I get back to the office. It's been years since a lady chased me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to have fun. You know, wherever I go, I just try to be, leave them a smile. You know, they, some of them have horrible, but people at Walmart, you gotta really love them to death, because most of them are, you know, widows, and, you watch them walk, and they're walking in pain, and they're standing at a cash register all day. Uh, really, yeah, I'll tell you one more at Walmart. There's a guy at Walmart, he's 25 years of age. He's in one of those wheelchairs that you do this with, you know. He's never walked in his life. He's very good looking. His name is Glenn, and I became friends with him. In fact, Paul and I took him out to dinner so we could share Christ with him and so on. Uh, anyway, one day I said, go ahead, here's a guy, I mean, really, you know, he'd be a head turner. <clears throat> he wasn't in a wheelchair. A lot of, most people feel sorry for him, but, you know, the, the other way. You know, just a, an all-American rotten kid, you know, typical all-American kid. 
He's doing so bad for a while, too. Glenn, you better stop. I'm running out of prayers for you. I don't know how to pray for you anymore. <laughs> now I hate me isn't enough. You know? But anyway, uh, he's really a good guy. And he's still really good right now. You, I really do good. We, we explain the gospel and everything, and he says, you know, I haven't stuck around or anything for a long time right now. I said, Glenn, have you become a Christian? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we just explained the gospel to him. Anyway, I asked him one day, a kid in an oil chair, works at Walmart. I said, How's it going? He said, Fantastic. I was shocked. And I said, Why is your day fantastic? He said, Jim, it's a choice. Isn't that beautiful? A kid will never walk. Okay, the last thing we want to look at is 1 Peter 5, 7, and 8. And this is the, a real key for work. Casting all your care upon him, for he what? Cares for you. Oh, does God really care? Yeah. I don't think he cares. I don't care what you think. I know what he says. See, that's why I think our counsel should be so based in Scripture. It's the authority. He said that. God is not a liar. He does care. You may not feel it. You may not think so. But God cares. And he says why? Be cautious. Be alert or alertful. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, not the devil, the devil is as a roaring lion walking about seeking food he may devour. And the word devour means to swallow whole. Yeah, both. If you look up the Greek, it's pretty bad. That's a warning. You know? You know, someone said, do you think Christians can have demons? I said, I'm more concerned that demons have Christians. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, I mean? yeah. what does it mean to be swallowed up? I, I don't know. I don't want to go there. He said, remiss, whom resist what? Steadfast in the faith. And he talks about afflictions. Don't you know that you have the same afflictions that you're, you have as a people in the past have had? You know, it's not, this is not a new game. This is not a new battle. It's as old as this book. Uh, now, and James said, you know, you need to, remember it says in, in Philippians 4, to worry about nothing. But that's not what the verse says. You tell someone that's a worrier, don't worry. They're going to worry about not worrying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, but don't worry. What are you supposed to do? What's it say to do with that? Give it to God in prayer. What is worry? Worry is God's call to prayer. Isn't it? Worry about nothing but what? Pray about what? Everything. What's the everything? Everything I'm worried about in the context. That's all. I mean, it, when you put it together, it's so simple for people. Oh, yeah. You're carrying something you need to give to him. Give it to the Lord. What will keep you from giving the Lord? Well, I don't know if you can handle it. What if he drops it? <laughs> oh, ye of what? <laughs> little faith. They're not saying they're not Christian, but they have enough faith to trust God in this issue. Okay. Uh, I want to give you two quotes. James is going like this. <laughs> He's supposed to have an itchy throat. I, mean, I don't know what's going on. I'm eating a brownie. Oh. <laughs> Hurry up, Logan. <laughs> Am I getting paid by the hour? <laughs> Let's say it. <laughs> We're having a rough time at the office financially. Your face no. is fine. I want to share two quotes from um, the, the book I'm telling you that I was reading. And I just had written this stuff up in the office sitting there. I was going to talk to you guys about it. I just read these two things. They're good. So you're getting... Now, this is free. You, know? you, know, you don't have to pay extra for this. And this is uh, Phillips. I believe it's the Phillips. You have the Phillips translation. 
He said, man who does not love God is really in love with himself. Simple, profound, but just right there. I, that's the kind of quotes I love. You know, it's not three pages, it's just, just right there. Okay, the second one is Don Marquez, and I don't know who he is, but he's in that one, in, in Tozer's book. Man thinks he amounts to a great deal, but to a flea or a mosquito, a human being is merely something good to eat. I love it. You know, Satan wants the cow view and so do the mosquitoes and fleas. Could you repeat it? And, and, and then I added my little uh, PS with this. And Satan, something to devour. <coughs> so. Jim, can you read that again? That quote again? Uh, I'll give it to you in the car. <laughs> Okay. Man thinks he amounts to a great deal, but to a flea or a mosquito or a human being is merely something good to eat. And then Satan doesn't want to eat you. Satan wants to devour you. Okay, now let me give you one more thing. How do you test if you're godly or not? How do you know how far along in your spiritual life? It's so simple. Uh, Paul has a problem with this. Also godly. <coughs> that when he gets in the bathtub, he just floats on the surface. But if you sink to the bottom, you've got a little ways to go. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> you get it? Yeah. Hey, probably all of us. Maybe, I know, he doesn't go quite to the bottom. I mean, he's, God's working on right now. Two or three inches before he hits the bottom. But anyway, oh, i, I got to tell you this. My son has a wonderful ministry in the ghettos in Houston. He has three ghettos. They don't call them the underfunded communities. They're, they're making a real change, breaking uh, probably generational poverty. And there's a black lady that works for him. And last year they prayed for so much for end of the year giving. And they didn't get it all. And she's in the pits. I mean, she's, she's the neatest lady. I just met her. I just had my 84th birthday down with my son and visiting all the different places he's working and the people there. And, but this gal, Richard said, why are you depressed? Why are you so down? Well, we prayed for this amount of money and we didn't get it. He said, but we got 100000 The church gave us to build a uh, school in Yashiri, Africa, where my son also adopted a, an area. You know, but no, but that was what we prayed for. That was for you, sure. You're praying on. Anyway, he went down, and Richard really felt bad. So they got a check, and it's just like two days, the end of the year, and the check just barely covered what they didn't have. So he walks in, and she's there, and he says, uh, "How much we short?" Oh, uh, I don't want to talk about. That. How much we short? Two thousand something. Right? He dropped the check down, and she screamed. And she let out this blood curdling scream, and I've been there, and everybody's running from the office. What's happening? What's happening? Richard said, She got a faith back. <laughs> <laughs> and this is her. I told her, I, I said, I've been sharing this all over, and this is what you said. I'm going out and find me a tub to walk on. <laughs> Father, maybe find puddles to walk on. And we'll praise God. And oh Lord, we have to be like the Father. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Lord, you keep putting us in situations where you stretch our faith. And sometimes it's like, oh, I think my faith is going to snap. It's just stretched to the end. But it never is. So, Father, we're thankful. You called us to come along hurting people. And Lord, we know that it's not just having all the right answers and slapping them with Bible verses and all, but Lord, that we would have compassion and love. Lord, that people would sense that we really care about where they are and where they're going. And we have a real desire to help. 